tell you about the Mark of the Beast and the Antichrist real quick. Okay, uh, Mark of the Beast is going to be a, a, a global world system that you won't be able to, to participate in unless you reject Jesus Christ. This system, this system, you won't be able to buy, trade, or sell unless you have the Mark of the Beast. And then if you, and if you don't become a part of it, they'll kill you and your family and all that stuff. So. One thing about the Mark of the Beast is they, they have this chip called the RFID chip, which is Radio Frequency ID chip. The Lord identified through through his prophets that that is the Mark of the Beast, and you can't accept it. You can't let them implant it in you. No, don't let them put it in you as a tattoo. Don't ingest it, and don't let them implant it in your right hand. Like the Bible says in Revelation, it said no man will buy, trade, or sell without the Mark. And then they get they get the uh, mark of the beast in their in their right hand and in their forehead. That's what the that's what the word of God says. And it says that any man that takes the mark of the beast, you're gonna come down with these grievous sores. And also, God's not gonna let you into heaven because that's the ultimate form of treason. This RFID chip it's a GMO, so if you take it, it's going to kill you. Eventually, the chip is going to kill you itself, and so you'll lose your life. And on top of that, you'll lose your soul. So the Antichrist, he's going to be a flesh man that's going to come on the scene, and he's going to be having supernatural powers that he gets from the devil. And he's going to be able to do miracles right in front of you. And so he's going to go into the temple over there in Jerusalem and pretend to be God. And all that stuff like that. So this guy, I mean, when he comes on the scene, he's going to be a smooth talker. Everybody's going to be in love with him because at first he's going to be uniting all the religions and bringing about world peace and all that stuff. And then the aliens and the UFO, which are really demons, posing as aliens, are going to come down and confirm him. Like, yeah, this is the guy and this is God and we're on God's side and all this bunch of nonsense. Let me tell you how the real God comes back. When Jesus Christ returns back, he ain't doing world peace. He's coming back as a conqueror. And he first thing he does, he burns up his enemies with fire that comes out of his mouth from the word. His word sets people on fire. The word coming from Jesus cuts like a sword and, and, and devours up all his enemies. And people that's all on the ground, those Satanists, they're going to be trying to hide out and all that stuff. And they ain't going to be able to hide out because they're going to see him coming even through the rock. So he's going to make sure of that. So that's how the real Jesus Christ comes back. He comes back as a God. A God that's putting fire on his enemies. There won't, there won't be no mistakes. But before that, there's going to be false Christ and, and, and rising up like fake Jesus Christ. And then the, the, the Satanists and all these enemies are going to be saying, Yeah, we got Jesus in the secret place. Come with us and we're going to show you Jesus and all that stuff. It's going to be fake. But the real Jesus... You ain't, ain't nobody got to go show you the real Jesus. Because when he comes, every eye is going to see him at the same time. So there's there's no mistake. That's the most grand entrance there is. So don't fall for any of that other stuff. Don't fall for the Antichrist pretending to be God. Because he got a little bit of powers that he got from the devil. And, and, and technology. Because they, they, with Project Blue Beam, they can make holograms of any religious figure that you want to think of just to fool you. So don't fall for any of that stuff. Uh, if they tell you you can't eat and, and we're going to kill your children or we're going to do all this and that, hey, you still can't deny Jesus. You got to hang on to Jesus no matter what because guess what? Jesus Christ died for us. You know, he took our penalty on the cross. You know, where all of us have sinned and, and was worthy of, 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 you know, the ultimate punishment. But Jesus said, hey, I'll take their punishment for them. He said that to the Father.